The Russian Soyuz 2.1 launch vehicle delivered members of the next expedition to the International Space Station, and along with them, a rather unusual package, hundreds of Drosophila flies. As part of an important experiment, it will help answer a number of fundamental questions that are currently holding back the construction of the Russian Orbital Station Orbital Station and the exploration of the Moon and Mars. What has Russia come up with? And what sensational data have they already managed to obtain? We'll talk about this as well as about the new hero of the week after a brief summary of positive news. Soyuz 2.1A launched successfully from Baikonur Cosmodrome. Another batch of multifunctional Su-30 SM-2 fighter jets has been delivered to the troops. Another batch of Mi-8 MTVM-5 military transport helicopters has been delivered to the troops. The company Navio has unveiled the L-5 passenger unmanned electric shuttle. In the Tula region, the second phase of high molecular polymer production worth 20 billion rubles has been launched. A plant for the production and repair of gas turbine equipment. In Solnechnogorsk, cosmetics production. In the Krasnodar region, production of granular ammonium sulfate. The country's largest plant protection product research center has opened in the Moscow region. Russian school children won five gold and five silver medals at the International Astronomy Olympiad in the Republic of Bangladesh. This week, the Soyuz 2.1 rocket delivered a new crew to the International Space Station and along with them, a special box filled with hundreds of fruit flies. Not just any flies, but hereditary cosmonauts. Their ancestors spent a whole month in orbit quite recently in September and October 2025, aboard the Bion M2 spacecraft. All of this is part of a large and promising scientific program that began in our country back in 1973. And here's why it's needed. In 1971, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics launched the world's first manned orbital station, Salyut 1, into orbit which was an important step toward expanding the human habitat to near-Earth orbit. However, despite the fact that people were already regularly flying into space by that time, there was no certainty that they would be able to endure a fairly long stay there without harm. There were concerns about the effects of weightlessness, especially in combination with cosmic radiation. Therefore, under the guidance of the Institute of Biomedical Problems, the Bion Research Program was launched. The program's core goal was to launch special satellites into orbit with living organisms, including animals, fungi, insects, and primates. The satellites were equipped with automatic water and food supply systems, allowed for data collection, and enabled unique experiments to be conducted. By the third stage in 1975, foreign countries such as the United States, France, and others began actively joining the program. Of course, no one else in the world was doing anything like this, and it was simply impossible to obtain the necessary data under Earth conditions. Experiments in space under the BION program were regularly conducted until 1997. A total of 11 spacecraft were launched. As a result, numerous recommendations were developed for cosmonauts helping to preserve their lives and health. It can be said with confidence that without our Bion, there would be no International Space Station. Unfortunately, a lack of funding put the continuation of the work on a long pause. In the 2000s, Russia was focused on other priority tasks. There weren't enough resources for everything at once. But in 2013, we gathered our strength and launched the BNM No One spacecraft, which carried 45 mice on board. Eight gerbils, 15 geckos, snails, crustaceans, fish, and various microorganisms on which more than 80 experiments were planned. Unfortunately, we were not able to fully implement the program. The pace food for the mice stopped reaching the feeder 
because its physical properties changed. In zero gravity, the mice began to starve and, as any mice would in search of food, they got out of the cage and ate the wire insulation, which caused the electronics responsible for supplying oxygen to fail. As a result, some of the inhabitants of Beyond died. Despite this setback, Russia did not abandon further research. Bion M No 2 was developed using prior experience and fitted with modern equipment, including an updated video surveillance system. Launched into orbit in September 2025, it safely landed in the Orenburg steppes after a month. All the inhabitants survived and were in good condition, which made it possible to collect the necessary data from them. And the descendants of the fruit flies that returned from space have now been sent to the International Space Station for further research, continuing the proud tradition of their dynasty. But why is all this necessary nowadays when humans have already become accustomed to living in orbit? So far, humans have only become accustomed to a specific orbit, the one where space stations fly. As you know, Russia is building its national orbital station, Russian orbital station, and initially they wanted to place it in an unusual polar low Earth orbit with an inclination of 97 degrees. On one hand, this allows for round the clock and all weather monitoring of the entire territory of Russia from the station, particularly the Arctic region and the northern sea route. On the other hand, the sections of the polar orbit over the poles pass above the belts that protect the Earth from solar and galactic radiation. The radiation level there is 30% higher than at the lower latitudes where the International Space Station flies. In other words, a person will receive a higher dose of radiation, which can lead to serious health problems. But how dangerous is it? Without flies or mice, we can't know. For this reason, we sent Bion M No 2 specifically into a sun-synchronous near-Earth orbit at an altitude of 370-380 km. And now we are decoding the data we've received. That's why the question of which orbit the Russian orbital station station will be placed in remains open, and the inhabitants of our space arc will help us find the answer. But if we look at it more broadly, Russian scientists are solving a much more global problem. Without a clear understanding of cosmic radiation's effects on living organisms, exploring the moon or traveling to distant planets is impossible. As we mentioned in previous episodes, providing such missions with spacecraft and power systems will most likely be achieved in the near future. But no one knows how to protect a cosmonaut from prolonged exposure to radiation. Various assumptions are being made, from the use of pharmaceuticals to protective shields. First, it's essential to study all the nuances of radiation's long-term effects on humans thoroughly. That's why we are continuing the Bion experiment and plan to launch a new satellite in 2030. It is notable that we are now doing this completely on our own, solely with our own resources, because foreign countries are too afraid of sanctions to address humanity's global problems. However, we're used to this. And, by the way, it seems that we've already answered one serious question. The theory of panspermia is widely known in scientific circles. It's a hypothesis that life was brought to our planet by a meteorite. That is, microorganisms, literally like aliens, arrived on Earth with a comet or meteorite from the depths of the universe and took root here, giving rise to all living things. The theory is appealing, but it's difficult to prove in practice, mainly because it's unclear whether there are microorganisms that can survive the extreme conditions of space for a long time. Not beyond him too. Russian scientists placed 22 types of microorganisms, not inside, but outside directly on the hull, in special basalt plates that imitate the surface of a meteorite. During the flight, these cosmonauts had a tough time. They were exposed to radiation and other extreme factors for a long period, 
and during landing they also faced high temperatures while entering the dense layers of the atmosphere. As a result, all the microorganisms died, all except for one strain of thermophilic spore-forming bacteria. And that was enough to prove that hypothetically the transfer of life between planets is possible. If that's the case, probably. We ourselves can send special types of resilient bacteria to other planets, for example, to Mars in order to create the necessary soil, atmosphere, and other conditions there for future human colonization. All that's left is to develop such bacteria and justify the effectiveness of their use. However, that's another topic which we will definitely return to. Subscribe to the channel Vremia V Peered to learn what Russian science is working on.